Kaz. Sponsored by Mellow Roast Coffee and Grain Beverage. We blend three kinds of rich, robust coffees with roasted grain to take away the bitter edge for great coffee taste without the bitterness. you never to do that. Oh, no, not you, Mr. Colcourt. I, I, excuse me. Yes, he's right here. I will, sir. Mr. Kaczynski, how many times have I told you to leave my paper unperturbed? I wasn't perturbing it. Look, Mrs. Fogel, let's be fair. I'm a Dodger fan, you're not. Can we make a deal about the sports section? No deal, Mr. Kaczynski. And that was Mr. Colcourt on the phone. He's also displeased with you. What now? It seems that sports sections are not the only thing you steal. Mrs. Fogel, I have to tell you something. That word is a little touchy with me. Could we possibly say, uh, what have I taken? How about my secretary? How about your secretary? Let me just explain something to you so you get it clear. Around this office, you're a freshman. And freshmen don't get their own private secretaries. Those are the rules of the office. Yes, sir? Rules of common decency state very clearly that a colleague does not steal a fellow colleague's secretary. Right. Mr. Bennett would like you both in his office immediately. Could you say I pilfered her for a couple of hours? This is not a joking matter to me, Kaczynski. Me neither, man. Can't type. Yes, hey, Governor. Yes, yes, sir. Well, that's that song. Turn... At the present time, we're not sure how many hostages the prisoners have taken. But I'm talking with Mr. Robert Crowley of the Governor's Troubleshooter Squad here at State Prison. Mr. Crowley, what are the prisoners' demands and how many hostages have they taken? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the Governor and I would like to say that uh, there's nothing to worry about. The situation uh, is stable at the moment. And we feel that whatever problems arise can be dealt with amicably, as our administration has always dealt with things like this in the past. Now, as soon as we find out exactly what the prisoners are requesting, I'm sure it can be taken care of. Yes, he's uh, just come in my office. Why specifically hasn't Warden Quayle met with the presses yet? Fred, I, I'll, I'll talk to him. We'll take it from there. Well, Warden Quayle is in charge of the situation. All I can say at the moment is everything is well in hand. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. Oh, Fred, Please I will. Stay tuned for any further developments. Peter, will you turn that thing off? I'm turning you to mm, yes, our sir. regular programming. Thank you. You got the picture? That was my old prison. Yeah, we got a little um, interesting situation here, Kaz. The governor has a car waiting for you downstairs, and he wants you out there right away. The governor wants me to go? I don't understand. What for? The prisoners have asked for you to be a go-between with the state. You serious? Hey, oh. considering the media coverage, now that could be a real feather in your cap, sport. <laughs> I had a bullet in my head, sport. Oh, you're over-dramatizing. I mean, listen, you know these guys. I mean, you could get a little rapport going with them, you know? Hey, Harvard! This is a prison riot, not a panty raid. There have been seven murders in that place recently. Do you read the newspapers? I read. Kaz, that phone call was a request, not an order. I just told the governor to talk to you. You don't have to do it. All right. Let me ask you something. Uh, who did the governor say was in uh, charge? Or wh which guys? Well, the warden's been in phone contact with a man named Specs. Specs D'Amato? That's right. No way, man. I mean, he'd steal your cigarettes or your desserts, but a prison takeover? I mean, if it's true, it's a plus. He's... the man is a very decent human being. <laughs> I wonder what he's in for. Robbery. Is it possible there are decent human beings in the job? Uh, gentlemen, look, it's just... Really, it's a much better time to have this kind of discussion. I'm sorry, sorry. excuse me. All right. I'm sorry, Peter. What kind of weapons did he say they had? Well, they didn't, didn't, the warden didn't say exactly, but yeah, they were weapons. I'm sure they got them from the guards. That means anything from 38s to machine guns. Cass, time is short. The governor has to have an answer right away. Now, I could ask you not to get involved in this, but I'm not going to. I think you've already made up your mind. Well, there's only one problem here. I do have a lot of friends in there. Sport. Tell your secretary I won't be needing her anymore today.
And so the armed group, calling itself the Revolutionary Council, have taken over Compound B. Now, that's an old cell block that was scheduled for demolition. However, they are isolated from the mass of the other prisoners. Well, what about the mass of the other prisoners? Are they locked up? Well, we haven't got them back in their cells yet, but they are penned into their individual blocks. Can you keep them there? Yes. Well, at least for now. From what you're telling me, if the Revolutionary Council begins shooting, the rest of the inmates can break out. Excuse me. Come in. Oh, hello, Kaz. Hi. I hate to see you back here under these circumstances, or under any circumstances. Is this the man the riders want to talk to? Yes, sir. This is Mr. Crowley, Mr. Kaczynski. How do you do now? Look, the warden has just been showing me a map of the prison. I understand you're familiar with Compound B. Intimately. Yes, uh... Mr. Kaczynski was incarcerated in Compound B. Yes, I know B. about that. Now, the uh, rioters have what they call uh, some Revolutionary Council demands. They want you to go over them and then bring them back to me. Yes, sir. More important than that, I want you to check on the guards, see how they've been treated, any injuries, and if one guard is hurt from this moment on, I'm going to bring in the National Guard. National Guard. Terrific. Why don't you bring in the big nuclear? Those are my orders, Mr. Kaczynski, from the governor. What do I bring them? What do you mean, what do you bring them? What are you offering the prisoners? Mr. Kaczynski, I can assure you, as spokesman for the state, that if they go back to their cells peacefully, and if they release the guards unharmed, the governor will consider their so-called demands. That's what you're offering them, that you're going to consider their demands? That's it. I used to write you guys a lot when I was in here about prison reform. Never got an answer from you. Probably lost my addresses. Now listen about cell block C, which is next to B. Excuse me. Yes. Just a minute. Mr. Crowley, it's for you. Hey, you guys still yes. doing hard time here? Herbie! How you doing? Did you miss me, kid? No, they don't miss you. My water cooler doesn't miss you, and I don't miss you. You know, prosperity hasn't mellowed you too much. You got a pressure cooker situation here, and this guy's running rapid. Uh, Kaz, he's doing a job. He's just doing his job. This guy doing a job could get a lot of people killed. Herbie, talk to me, sweetheart. Dying, Cass. We're dying in here. Seven murders in 18 months. Jeez, guys are just going nuts. I know, I've been reading. I mean, it's been so long now, Cass. Things are just getting better and worse. Oh, we got to get those changes, Cass. I mean, got to. I'll do everything I can. How did it hit the fan? Oh, there's been a lot of planning. It was supposed to come down to a few cool moves, you know? But then a couple of guys just just went bananas. It got rough. You know how those things go. <sighs> you son of a gun. I'm so proud of you. You really made it, didn't you? You made it into the big time. I'm working on it, Spex. I'm working on it. <laughs> hey, tell me about the gals, Cass. I bet you're really swarming with gals. Secretary, Spex. A lot of secretaries. Ooh, wow. Secretaries. Come on, kid. I just saw a quail. Quail? Hey, did you put his uh, fish in the water cooler like you used to? Not today. Ah, oh, you should have, Kaz. You should have. It would have been a hell of a lift for the guys to hear the warden scream, Oh, my God! Like he used to, you know? Come on. 
They're a little uptight in the warden's office for that kind of stuff today, man. Yeah, well, things are going to be even more uptight around here with Samson in charge. Samson? I thought you were in charge. Who, me? No. Well, I'm kind of like the dead mother around here, and I, I wrote out the demands nice and legal-like. Oh, you would have been proud of me for that. But no, I, I'm not in charge around here. Why Samson? Who's going to say no? Welcome home, Brother Kaz. Welcome home. Now, I forget, last time we were together, did you owe me one, or did I owe you one? Hey, see. We demand better prepared food for all prisoners, plus special food for the Muslim prisoners and respect for their dietary laws in accordance with the Constitution of the United States. Yeah. And one meal a day, and a blanket for a man in solitary, and a hearing with the warden before the man's whole time so that the guards don't take advantage yeah. like they have been. Yeah. Better lighting in the cells so that the prisoners can read if they so choose more visiting attorneys to help the men with their sentences, conjugal visitation rights as they have in the so-called federal prison. God bless you, Samson Keels. And about my demands for a tacky new boutique, hmm? All right. And in conclusion... Uh, you do dig my terminology, don't you, Lloyd Kaczynski? <laughs> We demand the cancellation of the construction of the so-called Drug Rehabilitation Center for the reason that most of the men serving time in here for drug-related crimes have been incarcerated for pushing, not using. The Revolutionary Council believes the aforementioned center a waste of the taxpayers' money. <laughs> Is that it? All right, most of your demands are legitimate, and I must say, long overdue. But I got to tell you, you guys got your ears pinned on backwards as to the conjugal visitation rights and the cancellation of the drug center. You know as well as I do that you guys got a floating pharmacy going through here, and some of these men need help. And you know I'm talking about medical help. You through tap dancing with your mouth? No. How are the guards? What are you worried about those suckers for? Because if any of the guards get hurt, the governor's going to send in the National Guard. I think you should know that. You tell the governor that if he brings in any troops, there will be a whole lot of hurting going on here. Samson, I do believe that the governor's holding all the high cards here. Do not bring me no governor, Bob! You concentrate on what Samson's holding. You got that? These are our demands. And we want you, your job, is to take those demands to the governor or whoever the hell else is up there, and you tell them that we want it all. Yeah! We're tired of waiting. That's why we're doing this. And you tell them that if they make one move toward this compound, we kill one guard. And for every hour that they do nothing about our demands, we snuff one pig. You got that? You're crazy. What? What? Don't ever say that to me again. You're not going to get anything you want that way. Well, we soon see. Oh, listen. You tell them that we got their precious pigs dressed up just the way we are. So that uh, if anybody 
gets in the dumb ideas. Their bullets won't know the difference between the inmates and the guards. The governor's man has asked me to go and see if they're all right. Entrez vous, monsieur. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, you put on some poundage, honey. Stop mm. off. Well, they get some good food in here. I get plump myself. This way, princess waste away to nothing. Cass, you gonna do the warden's goldfish for us, honey? I thought your Cass would be carrying on that tradition by now, huh? Cass, nobody can figure out how you pull that switch. I uh, <laughs> Samson pretty rough on you as always, huh? Oh, man, that cat never done me very much. You know that. Yeah, I know. But I always thought you was a cool dude. Because you never put me down with the way I am. Why should I? Huh? Some cats do. Cats. Hey. How is the disco scene? <laughs> I could get into some hot silks and disco down for days, honey. You are too much. I went once. You mm -hmm. would not believe what's going down up in that dance floor. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't believe it, honey. <laughs> you know, I sent away for a poster of John Travolta. Did you? I hope they let me put it up. <laughs> boy, that boy is so hot. Oh. Do you know him, Cass? No, man. How the hell would I know John? Well, get to know him and get an autographed picture for Princess here. Mm, mm, mm. Cass, would you do that for me, huh? I swear to God, Princess, if I ever run into John Travolta, I'm going to ask him what you just asked me, okay? God bless you, Cass. God bless you. You know you're fine for straight. Thank you. How you doing, man? You gonna help us, man? If I can. I need to see how the guards are. Come on, Cass. You see them, they safe and sound. Samson says to bring you back. What? Huh? You have to go back now, babe. Are you all right? Open up. Let me in there. Come on. Let him in. How are you doing? You men being treated all right? I asked you if you're being treated all right. They roughed us up a little when they first moved in. But there's something wrong here. Go ahead. You don't want me to say, but I got to, Donahue. You got to, Donahue. You shut your mouth. Why are you whining to this? We're gonna die. Face it. Now die like a man. He's got pains in his chest, and John, I think. It's time. Nobody knows it, but I seen him pull some pills from his locker once. Honey, you all right? Don't you touch me! Don't you touch me! I've killed you a thousand times in my head, man. Don't make me do it for real. Where were your pills in your locker? <clears throat> That's game. When you're here, you're distracting. When you're not here, you're even more distracting. Thought I heard you talking to someone. Oh, what? Uh, he's not here. Uh, never mind. Sit down. Is that the Wincott Industries merger stuff? Yes, it is. I'm sorry it took so long on this, but uh, I couldn't find my secretary. Kaczynski had her. It took me over an hour to find her. You'll never guess where he had her. Afraid to ask. In his room. But down the hall here? <laughs> no, in his room where he lives over the bar. Said it was more quiet, fewer distractions. You know what he meant by distractions? Me. Me, my secretary, and I can't bother her to get to my work done. I tell you, one of these days, we're going to have it out with him. Oh, now, Peter, you got her back. All you have to do is now is tell your secretary that you, she's not to work with Kaczynski without checking with you first. I already did that. 
Mrs. Smith said that she got a phone call from one of the executives of this firm ordering her to go over to Kaczynski's place. Oh, now, which executive would do that? She said it sounded like your voice, Sam. You mean he's using my name? No, just your voice. Apparently, he's got it down pat. Mrs. Smith is very clear on the fact that you ordered her to go there. Yes. Sam, it's not funny. He is disrupting this office, the entire routine. I, ever since he got here, the efficiency is broken down. I guess I'll have to trade a little uh, efficiency for a good laugh every now and then. Well, he's not giving me much to laugh about right now. Oh. Well, he'll be all right. Look, he, those are his friends over there. No, they used to be. The Kaz is up there right now. It's not the same fellow they sent up there as a criminal six years ago. You know, I should have been absolutely neutral when I told him about the governor's request this morning. Well, if anything happens to Oh, come on, Sammy. He'll be all right. Look, he's probably running the show by now. He's got it set up like a Las Vegas casino, auditioning girls for a floor show. I know him. He's going to be all right. He's probably having a ball. And in doing so, we hope to save the taxpayers some of their hard-earned money. Did you tell them what I wanted? Yes, sir, I did. And what did they say? They is one man, Samson Keels. Oh, my God, I knew it. Who's Samson Keels? Ah, uh, lifer, twice over murder, and one of the toughest men over there. Can he be reached? Sure. You got a small kingdom you can offer? The man's on a power trip, sir, but that does not take away from the legitimacy of most of these demands. Oh, come on, you're a lawyer. Some of those demands are ridiculous. It's sheer provocation. I said most of the demands. Of course there are crazy things in here. That's the nature of negotiation, isn't it? You ask for the moon, you settle for the Bronx. Sir, you want to help me out with the gentleman, please? I myself personally have for a great many years, uh... Listen, there is much truth in what Mr. Kaczynski is saying. I don't want to hear truth from you. I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is you don't know how to run a prison. A few men overpower armed guards. you got a problem here with security. That's the issue here. That is not fair, sir. It's as fair as I can put it right now. Gentlemen, excuse me, but I've just had the pills in Mr. Donahue's locker analyzed. Therefore, angina. Now, considering the stress that he is under, it is extremely urgent that he get them now. Okay, we'll take care of it. I'll try. Very dynamic word under the circumstances. Thank you. bring the troops in? Because the governor decided it was necessary, and I agree with him 100%. Samson's going to take on your army now. You know that, don't you? Not with our tactical advantage. Your tactical advantage? Who the hell do you think you're dealing with here, Rommel? Samson's your basic maniac. He'll knock off a few guards. He doesn't care. He has to save face with the men there. Let me tell you something. If we back down now, there could be insurrections in every prison in this state. It's happened before. And it's also happened before. That changes in one prison. They brought hope in others. <laughs> you bleeding hearts are all alike. I am here to do a job, fella. I'm going to do it. You got it? Can I use your private phone? You know where it is. If you're thinking of calling the governor, it won't do any good. It couldn't do any worse. No, we have a serious problem here. There's someone else I have to call. Get out of there. You're sitting on ground zero, and that mass is going critical. Chaz, you've done all any... I don't know why I bother trying to talk you out of anything. You're the most bullheaded... Now, what do you want? Help. Help is what I want. 
They got a bureaucrat here who's going to make little Bighorn look like Disneyland. Listen, talk to the governor, will you please? Get him to pull the troops back. I don't know, sir. Any, rattle something in his closet, will you please? Okay, all right, look, I'll make a deal with you. I'll go to work on the governor. You stay out of the cell blocks, okay? Yes, sir. All right, now, listen. Yes, I know the men will feel betrayed. That's why I don't want you anywhere near them. Now, in your vernacular, you dig? All right. All right, you just stay where you are till I get back to you. And he is all right, I take it. So far. Ms. Morgan, uh, get me the governor. Now, he may duck, so use your legendary persistence. Uh, yes, our young colleague is still behaving in his customary, headstrong manner. Maybe you ought to order him back home. Well, you know Kaczynski. He goes off half-cocked. He thinks of ends, but he never considers consequences. <laughs> you're, you're actually worried about him. Well, I don't want him killed. I sort of feel responsible. I urged him to go. Would be great if he learned a lesson once, wouldn't it? Like the rest of us. I mean, the man ought to respect the fact that a, a colleague secretary ought not to be tampered with. Yeah, I'd like to find my newspaper intact. Just, uh, the, just one morning, that would be... Uh, don't worry about him. He's, he's fine. He said he would stay out of the line of fire. You think he's going to do that? I mean, just because he said so. Vogel, rush that call to the governor and have my car brought around. Look, I understand the troops are a reality now, but do you have to have them surrounding Compound B? Where would you put them, Mr. Kaczynski? Put them in the John, for all I care. Any place where they're not going to light Samson's fuse. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe Cass has an idea here. Look, if we station the troops around Compound A, they the could The troops will stay where they are. Now, I am as concerned about bloodshed as anybody here. My mission here is to save lives. It is the visual threat of those troops that will do the job. Visual threat. And I don't want to hear anything from you. They wouldn't let me in, Mr. Quayle. But you're what? the prison doctor. I'm just another pig to them now. All right, when things calm down, we'll see he gets them. But it better happen soon, or it may be too late. I don't understand. Why can't you get the kinds to listen to you? Listen? I'm lucky I didn't get shot. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. How you doing? Herbie? Want to take a little trip over the water cooler? No, I didn't think so. Listen, if any of you guys got some influence with the big fish out here, why don't you tell them what the media is going to do to him and the governor when they find out that the uh, National Guard wouldn't let Donahue get his pills and he dropped dead? Of course, one of us could take the pills in. I think the cons would let us do that. But unfortunately, I'm the only one with hands and feet. Right, Herbie, babe? On one condition. They sent in the troops. They're taking them away. I made a deal with them. Don't shut me, man, or you'll go too. No, 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 Samson. It, it's true. Look, they're clearing out, Samson. That's a trick. They didn't send these troops here just to send them home. It's not a trick. They want to negotiate. They admit they made a mistake. OK. Well, then they'll be willing even more so when they find out what we got for them. If you do anything, man, you're going to blow this whole... Listen, you're the leader here. Why don't you lead, for crying out loud? This is a chance to really accomplish something. You have to cool it, though. They got half the state's media waiting out there. They're behind you. I bet you they're behind me. A hundred percent. I told them. You're the man. They know you're the man. And you say that the press is going to come in here and we can tell them our story? If I can give Donahue his pills. No, we ain't giving Donahue nothing. If anybody gets killed in here, they're going to crack down on you like you wouldn't believe, man. You got a chance to make history. You do, Samson. Don't blow it, man. Okay. Okay, take him back inside. 
We can always ice in later. Samson says Cass can give Donahue his pills. I got your pills. Not so tough now, are you, without your club? Can't beat up on my head, man, huh? I said take your pills. Go to hell. Nightmares I got from you, man. I still see your rotten face in my dreams. You just love to beat up on me, didn't you, huh? Good. Glad you still love me. You're sick, man. You're one of the sickest animals I ever met in my life. You just love to beat up on me. You're a moron. I thought you were supposed to be so smart. I beat you for your head. What? What? I beat you for getting out. Oh, I seen you. Studying and reading. I knew you was getting out. I knew it. You go out, and I stay here. So now you're back, and I love it. I hope they come down on you. I hope they come down on all of you. Not a one of you left alive. Not a one of you. I hope you rot. Right in hell. Princess Wiggins, just come on in here and hold him down. It's time to take you to this. <laughs> Let me take you, child. And then we'd all wait. <laughs> and it never failed. <laughs> Warden Quail's voice does a soprano shift that could clear across the courtyard. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> the minute he vowed, his fish in the water cooler, child. <laughs> and then a smidgen later comes a yell that rattled the bars in the cell block. Kaczynski! Stop, child. <laughs> uh. Hey, listen up. This is your tear gas canister. As soon as it hits the ground, boom, on top of it, the blanket, out of the window. You got that? OK, now, I want you to get some blankets in here, as many blankets as they got tear gas canisters. Hop to it. got to be kidding. <laughs> you got it. We're kidding. Anybody get hit with one of these, it's going to die laughing. <laughs> Very funny, Jim. Cut it! Now we're going to settle this thing with talk, not with this garbage. Was that the way it's supposed to go down, good buddy, or was it supposed to work? We talk and they go bang, bang. Can we cut the word wrestle, please? I have a job to do. Now, number one, let's defuse this time bomb here. And number two, let me go back over there and start the negotiation going. That's number one, and that's number two. You know what number three is? You ain't going nowhere, Cass. You're not telling anybody how we're sitting up here. Lawyer, client, relationship. Everything between us is confidential, all right? Mm-hmm, sure is. You come in here, and you tell us 
that our side is going to be told out there, but nobody tells the media. You come walking in here, and the next thing we know, there's soldiers crawling out the cracks. You walk in here, and you start asking us, how about the pig Donahue? All right. Is he all right? Just a second. Well, not only him, but all those pigs. You're asking about them. Did they get hurt? But did you ever ask any of them, me, whether we hurt, did he? Did you ever ask? What the hell do you think I'm doing here? I'm one of you. That's right. You're one of us. Except, I can't tell it from looking at you. Princess, did you hear this man? He's one of us. We're our own. Princess is a fashion coordinator here. Why don't you just get him the right clothes? Joma, Dex. Help the princess. Don't worry, Kaz. The princess will see that you get a good fit. Oh, that's right, Kaz. You're one of us. You're gonna look like us. You're gonna sweat like us. You're gonna fight like us. You're gonna be locked up like us. And we'll find out which side you're on. And once it's fast, not good. Tacky. Tacky, tacky. All right, Kaz. <laughs> you've been saying you're one of us. Now everybody can see that you're one of us. Have you had any experience with prison riots? None, but I've had considerable experience negotiating. These are not corporate executives, Mr. Bennett. No, no, those lawbreakers are usually sent to those modern resort-style detention areas. I'm not here to make jokes. This is no way to handle it. I don't need your approval, Mr. Crowley. The governor has authorized me to conduct these negotiations, so this audition is over, all right? Come on, let's go. All right, I'll handle the enforcement then. Uh, you're welcome to it. I wouldn't touch it. Warden Quayle. Let me speak to the head man here. Samson. Yes, we have a brand new negotiator. Now, here, I'll let you talk to him. Uh, Mr. Keels, my name is Samuel Bennett. Now, your position has been explained to me, and I'm here to negotiate your demands. Okay, well, demand number one is that we want to talk to the governor. Well, now, the governor's not available, but I can assure you I'm fully authorized to speak for him. Ah, uh ah, -huh. we're not talking to no flunky representatives. We deal only with the governor. You got that? Mr. Keels, may I speak to your negotiator, Mr. Kaczynski? We got one negotiator here, and you're talking to him. <laughs> time we stop letting these government creeps and lawyers run our show. Right. Now right. we make these turkeys dance to our two. Those cats are not bluffing out there, man. Who's bluffing, guys? Who's bluffing? Everybody, get to your positions. We gotta show these suckers something. I'm not talking to nobody but the governor. Our only precondition is that we see that all your hostages are unharmed. You're not listening, man. The only hostages you'll see will be dead ones. Don't lean on them, man. Please, they have the weight. We got a few pounds, too. Yes. Hey, listen. I'm going to drop you a few samples. Princess, Specs, Counselor Kaczynski, bring me those guards, especially that pig Donahue. Now. The man is alive, you see the cats? Come on, cats, honey, stop jiving the operators. them out. Out of pure spite, he killed himself. He's killed all of us. So he's dead. That it just leaves another bullet for the live ones. I told you, bring all the guards up here. 
You take Donahue's body, you toss it in the yard, and that's for start. No. Body to me. No tossing bodies, no killing hostages, no more glory death trips over everybody in this room. Enough! And you're telling me what to do. Are you not concerned about making the lives of these men better in this place, not killing them? I'll kill you! Mr. Keel, I'm still waiting to discuss your demand. Now, believe me, there is some give on this side. What give? Donahue's dead. Now they're really going to hit us. Not if I tell them how Donahue died. Sure, sure. Who's going to believe that? Send out your representative. He'll believe it if I tell him. You're blue telling anybody anything. What a lie. Listen to the man. I want to hear what he has to say. Let's me this out somehow. I just want to hear what the man has to say. The man is right. Easy. Let's take it easy. Words cannot hurt him. The words don't mean anything unless you've got the governor right here. See, look at this. The man does not want to negotiate. Because if you bring him the governor, he's going to ask for the president. You're going to bring him the president, he's going to ask for the queen of Spain. We can make them give us guarantees. We can do it. What guarantees, man? Who the hell is going to listen to you if you kill a god? Joe Mar, what are you in for here? Huh? What are you in for here? Four? You're in for four to six? You've already served three? Is my memory correct? Have you served three? What are you, crazy? Princess, Princess, what do you got? Two, two years to go? Kiss your tacky boutique goodbye, sweetheart. Well, don't say that, Cass. How do you think I stay alive in here? The dream, Cass. That's all I got left. Don't you kill that. Me kill it? Don't you kill it. Not for him. This man is a four-time loser. He ain't got nothing to lose. He can't get out of here. And he doesn't care if you don't get out of here. Him and Donahue, two of a kind. What the hell are you listening to him for? I'm the one that started this thing. I got you out of those cells. Do you hear me? Me! Yeah, but we're supposed to vote on things. Let's vote. All right, listen to me. You guys have one chance left now. That if I walk across that yard and talk to the man over there and make a deal. Now, if you don't want me to walk across that yard, you tell him to stop me. You tell him to stop me now, because I'm going. Kaczynski! Kaczynski! I'm warning you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you, Kaczynski. Kaczynski! Kaczynski! you represent the state in these negotiations, Mr. Bennett? Are you sure you're in shape to negotiate, Cass? I'll do this one lying on my back if I have to, Sam. All right. Let's get out of here. I'm sure I can get you a blanket amnesty for all the participants. I think I can talk to the governor into creating a blue ribbon panel to investigate. No way. Out. No panels, no delays. We want to negotiate now. All right. Your move. Number one, the living conditions. Let us talk specifically about the food, the overcrowding, the brutality, the lack of rehabilitation training. Number two, the lack of doctors, lawyers, Teachers. Kaz, before you go any further, I want you to know there's a limit to what you can get. You got to look at that. Number three, there are no lights to read by. And even if you wanted to find a book, the library's half empty. Every book I ever read, I had to get from the outside and pay for out of my own pocket. Number four, there are no programs for teaching a legitimate trade. What are these men going to do when they hit the streets again? That's the problem. They need to learn a trade. I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for all your efforts. Well, yes, and the governor also asked me to thank you and uh, Mr. Kaczynski here. Well, I think you and the governor should be congratulated for your patience yeah. and the lives that were saved as a result. Sure they did. Let's go, Ken. I'll show you to the door. 
Kirby. I think you all have reason to be pleased with the results. And the governor did ask me to convey the hope that you would have time to play tennis with him when he arrives in town next oh, month. Oh, that's very nice of the governor. But tell him I don't think we play the same kind of game anymore. Uh, thanks for everything, Warden. Thank you, Mr. I'm Bennett. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope a wedge hasn't been driven between you and the governor. He values your friendship very highly, Mr. Bennett. Mm, I know, I know. But, well, when we meet and talk, I'm sure we can work things out. And I'll bet you your name comes up, Mr. Oh, I Bennett. hope so. <laughs> Cash, you coming? <laughs> Warden, yeah. now that you know where to find me, forget it, will you please? <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you, Kaz. Oh, no, no, no. That's such a sweet guy, isn't he? Why, why? Would you please slow down, please? Oh, my God! This is key! I'll see you in the car! According to the Sacramento Star brings love to W. Hollywood, Tinseltown, land of make believe. Hollywood, a city which is the guest of honor in a two hour special this Saturday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. It's Hollywood's Diamond Jubilee, hosted by Raquel Welch and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. A star-studded celebration of the 75th anniversary of the entertainment capital of the world. And the climax to this two-hour special will be the unveiling of the new Hollywood sign, live from the Hollywood Hills. Hollywood's Diamond Jubilee, this Saturday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Now, stay tuned for Dallas, next. Mm -hmm. 